Today I want to talk to you guys about a special brand of illegal drug deals. The ones that the government is outlawed for making with the pharmaceutical industry. Right now you see America's kinda like a tourist in Times Square saying, wow this random guy's willing to sell me a bag for $80? Sounds good. Can't imagine that there'd be a cheaper price if we were to negotiate a little bit. Now, as you can imagine, some people see the disparity between how much America pays as opposed to the rest of the world as a bit of a problem. Now, the main first step solution that keeps coming up over and over again for this problem is to allow the government's program, Medicare, to negotiate drug prices with pharmaceutical companies. It's the largest single buyer of medicine in America, so they'd have the most negotiating weight. The idea would be that Medicare could finally negotiate with pharmaceutical companies over prices and they could set a benchmark price for other entities in their own negotiations. Right now Pfizer walks into the Health and Human Services Department and dramatically slides over a piece of paper. Here's how much we're asking for the Medicare drugs this year. Now currently HHS has to look at it, unfold it, say, wow, wow more zeros, whew, well. Okie dokie, we'll pay it. Now, most of the coverage of this issue focuses on the astronomical sticker price in the abstract. But before we get into that, I want to take a second to emphasize that this method of conducting business is really, really, really expensive for the federal government. Giving Medicare the ability to negotiate prices falls under the revenue generating side of the equation, like raising taxes or cutting spending, because it leads to the government spending less money for the same amount of drugs. Federal law currently prohibits the Secretary of Health and Human Services from negotiating prescription drug prices. If the secretary were allowed to require brand name drug manufacturers to lower the price of their drugs, Medicare Part D could save, on average, $11 billion a year. I mean, that number might not be enough to write home about during this current multi-trillion dollar spending spree, but $11 million? Well, that's similar to NASA's budget, and these Medicare tweaks, well they aren't exactly rocket science. So what's the plan? Well, luckily for us, it is incredibly simple. This rule, if implemented, would require Medicare to tie the prices it pays for drugs to those paid by other countries. Specifically, it would only pay a price for a drug that matches the lowest price paid amongst foreign governments. That's right, now it's up to Canada and other developed countries to determine how much we pay for our drugs. It's the geopolitical equivalent to copying the smart kids homework. Hey guys, seriously, don't mess up your system like we did ours, we're depending on it. Be the friend on the streets in Times Square and get us 80% off that bag. Now before we pass too much judgment on that plan, I should mention that that was actually Trump's plan to solve this problem. Medicare will now look at the price that other developed nations pay for their drugs, and instead of paying the highest price on the list, and we are substantially higher than any other country in the world. Unfortunately, we're here today having this conversation, so clearly something went wrong. Well, he got sued by all of Big Pharma and lost in court for not following the Administrative Procedures Act to the T by allowing a comment period for the affected parties. Then he saw something shiny in the corner and never went back to fully implement that plan. Darn, would have been nice. So now the Democrats are stepping up to the plate. And before you guys get all high and mighty because, well, that Trump plan over there of copying the lowest drug price paid by one of our contemporary companies is a bit ridiculous, wait until you see what your guy's putting on deck. Now Biden's plan would require 125 brand name drugs that account for the greatest amount of Medicare spending to be subject to negotiation, with a cap on the price set at 120% above the average price paid of 6 other countries. Ok, so just a slightly less aggressive version of Trump's Medicare negotiation plan. Got it. So with most Democrats on board for allowing Medicare negotiations using a pretty much copy pasted solution from the opposing party's plan, this is for sure going to pass, right? Right on. 
Now, I made this episode in part to emphasize that this is not a right-left issue. This is a campaign finance issue. All the Republicans have come out against the budget reconciliation bill writ large that this Medicare negotiation will be taped to the back of. So these changes are relying on five Democratic congressmen who are currently lined up against it. What are you worried about? Are you worried these guys are going to call you a socialist? Now, President Trump again taking the fight right to the Democrats, stealing their thunder. Polls show that paying for health care is the number one anxiety on voters' minds right now. The Democrats touting big government takeover of health care via Medicare for all. But the president now considering a bold new plan to let Medicare negotiate down drug prices. Whew, that is going to make one heck of a 2024 campaign ad. Now here to understand the latest Democratic objections to this plan, let's roll out the moderates. Now the leading critic of this Medicare negotiation bill is New Jersey Democrat Bob Mendez. Now before I get into the core of his arguments, I feel like it's pertinent to mention that this candidate was brought to you by the good people over at drug companies, insurance, general lobbyists, and health professionals. Basically, he's taken more money from the medical establishment than a Mercedes driving malpractice lawyer. Now, Senator Mendez has two main objections to this plan. Although, saying he's got two objections to this plan is kind of like saying someone who doesn't like stars and stripes has two objections to the design of the American flag. Now, his first objection is he does not like the idea that other countries' drug price tags should be setting an upward balance on how much American Medicare can negotiate for our price tags. We're America. We have the freedom to be overcharged as much as possible. Can't pay a price above 20% of the international average? Sounds like a lack of freedom to me. And second, he doesn't like the fact that when Medicare negotiates a price, that price then becomes a public number that private insurers can use as a point of reference for their own negotiations with drug makers. Remember, because Medicare is by far the biggest purchaser of drugs, whatever price they make by swinging around their big money hose could become industry standard. He compares the potential for such an industry standard price set by the government's program Medicare to the government price setting in general. He instead argues that all private insurers and entities should be forced to negotiate their own prices with the drug companies instead of having this presumably cheaper Medicare price sitting on the table to use as a sort of frame of reference in negotiations. Insurance companies, just also avert your eyes from European and Canadian prices for negotiating reference while you're at it. Similarly, Kirsten Cinema has come out big against the bill, no surprise there, although one like Senator Mendes, we're not sure why. Well, we are sure why Cinema ranks as one of Congress's leading recipients of pharmaceutical industry donations, but she hasn't come public with a reason that I can read to you guys today. So those are the two Democratic senators that are joined by three Democratic representatives against this Medicare negotiation bill. On the representative side, you first have California Representative Scott Peters, who hasn't publicly explained his opposition yet. Then you have Oregon Democrat Kurt Schrader, whose explanation was, well, see for yourself. I'm committed to lowering prescription drug costs by championing legislation that has the potential to gain enough bipartisan, bicameral support to become law. What we've seen so far in the House will not pass in the Senate. Americans cannot afford for Congress to stall again. Yes, we need a bipartisan plan to deal with this issue, not a slightly watered down version of the plan the opposite party attempted to put into place a few years ago. We can't stall. We need high level of negotiations on this issue that everybody on both sides already mostly agrees on. And the last opponent to this is New York Representative Catherine Rice. And she did give a reason, but oh boy. The drug pricing bill was being used as a tool to offset the cost of a $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill. Remember, Medicare negotiation prices saves the government money, so Democrats were using it as a pay-for in the reconciliation bill. 
That reconciliation bill has no chance to become law. This is why I did not support the inclusion of the Medicare negotiation. Now, if that train of logic feels like it kind of derailed halfway through the explanation, you're not alone. The basic idea is that, in her opinion, the reconciliation bill is doomed, so she didn't want to tack on the Medicare negotiating prices part to be included in it. Kind of is the equivalent of saying, yeah, I think we're all going to fail the group project, so I didn't even bother emailing it into the teacher. Oh, it's a finished presentation and you guys put in effort? Yeah, we're going to fail. Not going to send it in. Well, why bother? Now it becomes even more perplexing because this isn't a double jeopardy situation we're talking about. Reconciliation bill fails, you can pass this thing independently or just keep tacking it onto every bill that you get your hands on. Need an $11 billion pay for? Well, I got you covered. Check this thing out. Still, whatever keeps the checks coming. Now, because of those two senators and those three representatives opposing this bill, well, commenters are speculating that eh, Medicare's ability to negotiate drug prices will probably continue to be non-existent. Man, I thought Bitcoin was a good investment. A few million dollars handed out in campaign contributions and you can continue to write the prices of products that you can sell to the government, your largest customer? Man, that's a good ROI. Don't worry though guys, we're not leaving this thing completely empty handed. There is potential agreement over a provision that limits how much drug companies can increase their prices every year. So Big Pharma, lock in those prices now. So that's the current state of Congress's debate over whether or not to let Medicare negotiate with Big Pharma. Before I go, I'd like to urge everyone to just follow one or a few sources that actually follow government policies and have memories better than that of a goldfish. When Donald Trump tried to implement his Medicare negotiation plan a few years ago, next to nobody covered it. I had two videos. Now that we're actually trying to do the Medicare negotiation again, pretty much copying his idea, nobody's mentioning that Donald Trump tried to do the exact same plan two years ago, and instead everyone's freaking out about this weird manufactured partisanship. I guess what I'm trying to say is, my god, if these industries can keep us ignorant of public policies and divided over partisan lines on nonpartisan issues. Well, then you only need to bribe five Congress people a few million dollars to keep the status quo. My personal mantra is policy, not politics. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello, YouTube. I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom continues to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.